Good morning. Uh, I'm, this morning I'm going to comment on recent reports uh, around uh, the Keystone XL pipeline project and then provide an update on the vaccination program for COVID-19 here in Alberta. We are deeply concerned uh, with reports coming from Washington that President-elect Biden may uh, abrogate the presidential permit for the Keystone XL border crossing later this week. That would be, a, in our view, a serious uh, economic and strategic error uh, that would set back Canada-US relations with the United States' most important uh, trading partner and strategic ally, Canada. By far, the largest exports of Canada to the United States are uh, represented by Alberta crude oil exports. Canada, on an average year, exports some $100 billion worth of energy through primarily Alberta crude to the United States through border crossing pipelines every year. That helps to fuel the American economy. And Keystone XL simply represents uh, a uh, expansion of that decades old energy uh, partnership and cooperation between our two countries. Uh, Keystone XL represents the opportunity to create over 40,000 jobs in the United States to add over $3 billion to the gross domestic product, ju it, just in terms of its construction. But more importantly, represents uh, energy security for a country in the United States that has uh, sacrificed so much to maintain energy security as a key part of its strategic interests and its prosperity. Uh, here's this very simple choice. Either the United States has access to environmentally responsible energy produced in a uh, close democratic ally, uh, or it becomes more dependent on foreign oil imports from Venezuela and other OPEC dictatorships in the future. Canada has made enormous progress in terms of improving the environmental performance of our energy production reducing significantly the carbon intensity of a barrel of, uh, of bitumen, for example, that is produced to the point where heavy oil produced in this province has on average a lower uh, carbon intensity than heavy oil produced elsewhere in North America and around the world. And Alberta and Canada are increasingly committed to doing better with huge investments in technology like carbon capture, utilization and storage, and uh, other technologies uh, to continue improving our environmental performance. Uh, but most importantly, this is, as I say, the largest, by far, the largest uh, export product of Canada to the United States. And, the, and Canada is the United States' most important trading partner. Uh, the strategic relationship between these two countries is essential for both of them, for North America, and indeed for global peace and security. We cannot imagine a circumstance where the United States would effectively choose to benefit OPEC dictatorships that have spread, uh, uh, that have spread conflict and undermine global security rather than partnering with its close democratic ally, Canada. Now, the government of Canada has said that the, um, the top priority in the bilateral relationship is uh, Keystone XL. And I understand that Prime Minister Trudeau expressed that to President-elect Biden on their call on November 9th of last year, uh, in which uh, a, the statement was issued indicating that they had agreed to engage on issues such as uh, energy environment, including uh, Keystone XL. Uh, it is our uh, fervent hope that the incoming U.S. administration will keep that commitment to engage with the top ally of the United States, with Canada. Uh, because uh, in the um, lead up to the uh, in, in the lead up to the swearing in of the new president, uh, understandably the. A transition team has decided not to have formal uh, uh, communications with foreign governments uh, given events over recent years. But I believe that as the most important ally and trading partner of the United States, uh, that the United States government owes Canada the respect to at least sit down with us and talk about this vital project in the broader context of our shared challenge in addressing climate change, continental energy security, and broader issues. 
Uh, surely the relationship between Canada and the United States is worth at least having that discussion. Major U.S. unions are calling, I know, on President-elect Biden and his transition team to do just that, to keep the commitment with Prime Minister Trudeau to engage on these critically important issues and not rush to judgment, to sit down and review the many facts that have changed since Keystone XL was first proposed over a decade ago. The dramatically improved environmental performance uh, here in Canada, the fact that TC Energy, the operator of the pipeline, has committed to net zero carbon emissions related to the operation of the pipeline, the contracting of uh, large uh, union contractors with the support of uh, the largest private sector unions in the United States the um, negotiation of uh, an agreement with a consortium of uh, both American and Canadian First Nations potentially to participate in an ownership stake in this project, and so much more. One of the reasons we are deeply concerned about this is that it would, if a, a presidential order is signed abrogating the border crossing permit, uh, it would affect a pipeline that already crosses the border. Uh, I'm not sure that people involved in this decision in Washington are fully aware that the border crossing was a section of the pipeline was built last year as part of a construction efforts. If a precedent is created where the United States government can unilaterally uh, uh, stop border crossings of pipelines that are that already exist, then this could be applied to the many other pipelines that provide Canadian energy to U.S. consumers. We know that the same political forces trying to disrupt and uh, stop the construction of Keystone XL are involved in trying to stop the expansion of Line 3, uh, of, as well as Line 5 to the upper Midwest, and many other vital projects that, con that are the backbone of continental energy independence. And so if this precedent is allowed to go forward, uh, I believe those same political forces will then seek to get a presidential order retroactively uh, to uh, remove uh, the permission for border crossing of other critical energy infrastructure. And for Canadians here, we are talking about $100 billion in exports, more than twice as much the value of exports of Canadian automobiles and auto parts to the United States. So this is a matter that touches on Canada's vital economic interests. And I'm therefore confident that the government of Canada will reflect in the next uh, couple of days the kind of priority it has placed on the construction of Keystone XL in saying that it is at the top of the bilateral agenda. All we ask at this point is that President-elect Biden show Canada the respect to actually sit down and hear our case about how we can be partners in prosperity, partners in combating climate change, partners in energy security.